Hey guys, Matteo here. Welcome back to a new video. And today we're gonna to talk about the MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 Max top spec, four terabyte internal SSD, how it handles the 12K footage, how did I grade my Tutor spec CAD, and a bunch of uh, interesting stuff. I'm recording the screen for my MacBook Pro. Uh, I have my Ursa 12K here just to let you know guys that this was shot with this camera, which uh, I totally love and I think there's gonna be a video coming out very soon about this camera. Instead of giving you a benchmark or just playing back random clips, I'm gonna actually do a color grading tutorial. Just a reminder, I'm not a computer tech. I'm an artist, I'm a cinematographer, colorist, and I edit my own stuff. I just need a machine that works and when it doesn't, I just drive 10 minutes to the closest Apple store, I bring it in and they give me a new machine or they just repair it in a couple of hours and I can't go back and work because every time I don't have this computer with me, I'm actually losing money. For me, Mac is all about reliability. So let's just jump into the project right now. I have DaVinci open here. I love the color palette of this uh, project. As you can see, there's a lot of warm shots at sunset. There's a lot of blue hour shot in the morning. There's some very underexposed stuff shot on red. So we're gonna see if it actually works with, with red codec as well. Let's see my timeline resolution. So I'm gonna open this up and I set it up to 6144 by 2560 because that's a typical 240 aspect ratio. As you can see, it doesn't have any problem scrolling through this clip. We're talking about a file that, it, that was originally, we can see here, uh, 5120 by 4272. Of course, this was anamorphic to X. So this is a massive file. And when we go here, uh, when you think about it, we are in a 6K timeline and I can stop any point and play it back. That's fine. Red codec, Blackmagic RAW, five by one, working great. There's literally no lags. This is a red RAW clip playing back just fine. As many of you know already, I'm not a huge fan of super complicated node structure. I try to get my look while I'm shooting in the production on set. So I have the less amount of work to do in post. That's my philosophy. If I need to do something, uh, of course I do. Like in this case, as you can see, there's a four node structure uh, where I went ahead and adjust some stuff that I'm gonna show you soon. But my process is pretty straight, I uh, grabbed the right lens, I, I exposed my image as I wanted based on my battery Rec. 709 LUT, the natural that I load into the camera, and I tried to get my colors right on set. Let's see here the very first clip. This is the flat image, I'm gonna pull it out full screen right here. This uh, is basically my battery natural Rec. 709 LUT. Let's jump into the raw settings here, I have a color temperature set to 6000, tint set to 10, which I usually don't have, but in this case, the image was a little bit green, which I really like, because it reminds me a lot about the Alexa, but in this case, I decided to put it at 10. ISO was 400, which is great if you can do 400 on the Ursa 12K, because at 800 is the native ISO, but the lower you are, the less noise you have. This camera could be noisy in some occasion, and we shot, of course, in a like as you feel, I always select the highlights recovery because it's a super cool feature that I love in DaVinci. So the second thing I did, of course, my basic adjustment. So in this case, let's activate this guy right here. This changed quite uh, dramatically the image from just the ladder only from here, we went to here. And what I did here, I warm it up the image a little bit, brought down uh, shadows, meads, my idea for this video is that I wanted to have the shot on the beach at sunset, very warm, and the shot at sunrise, as you can see right here, these guys, cold, because I wanted to have a nice contrast. The other thing, of course, they were a little bit too dark, so I used this mask right here to bring them up a little bit. Um, you can't really tell there is a mask, in my opinion. Uh, I think I kind of fit it out pretty well. And the other problem was this part of the sky right here was a bit too hot in my opinion so i decided to drop it down a tad and this is the final clip again nothing crazy another thing i have to say about this computer i don't have anything plugged in right now uh, i started at 100 percent about 20 minutes ago 
and my battery said 95%. Another thing that I wanted to mention guys is that all this footage is actually on my internal SSD, but I did do a test with the external SSD, the Samsung T7, and it worked pretty much the same. I'm sure there are some benefits because the internal SSD is super fast, but as far as I can tell on a 6K timeline or even an 8K timeline, playing back 12K anamorphic footage didn't have any problem even on the external SSD. Moving on, we have this uh, another clip right here. What did I do here? Battery, natural rack 709. Of course, this was against the sun, so the shadows were a little lifted. I have to bring them down a little bit, and I forgot to actually show you my scopes, because it's something that I usually do. I don't know why I didn't bring them up. So let's just jump back with the first clip, and so you can see the scopes. I'm actually gonna put a vector scope right here, and then we are at the second one. So for some people, they might be underexposed, I would say, but this is just my style, you know, I, I just like dark images and a little bit moodier images. This is the dad explaining the kids what to do with that board. Again, battery natural rack 709, really good starting point. Drop shadow and contrast, copy the correction, warm it up, and uh, it's a beautiful image. Okay, so this is going pretty fast, guy, yeah, but that's how I like it. And as you can see, it's pretty consistent. These were all shot, I think around 5 p.m. And then we finally jump to the first of this blue hours one. You know, it was about 5.30 in the morning here. This is the log file. Again, plenty of information in the shadows. This is something that you have to keep in mind, guys, with the Ursa 12K. It works the opposite as the pocket. So with the pocket, you have a really, really good highlights roll off, but the shadows are always a little bit um, washed out. You don't have a lot of information. Sometimes they're a bit noisy. Not a huge fan of how the shadows look on the pocket 6K, but the roll off is totally insane. On the earth side, where's the other way around? So it's not that good on the roll off, but at 800, for example, he has way more stops of uh, shadows. Uh, the dynamic range charge. So basically you can underexpose as much as you want and you're gonna be able to retrieve those shadows. So that's what I usually do with the Ursa. I try to let the shadows just fall into the darkness because that's what I like. And of course, in this situation, for example, let's, let's bring this image, see those tires. Are we shooting at tires commercial? No. So why should I care if they're black? Like. Is there anything that's gonna tell a story about those tires? No, what we care is there's the ocean back there. It's early in the morning and these guys just got there. What did I do here? It's already looking pretty good. Let's jump into the rough settings here. I had color temperature at 4,000 and this time it was a little bit too magenta. So I went down with the tint at minus 10. So the image that you saw right here, the reason why with the battery they were a bit flat still is because they were shooting against the sun and that was lifting the shadows quite a lot. As you can see, if you're in low light situation, just with the battery, it, it already looks pretty contrasty. So I like that. I mainly drop a little bit the highlights and nothing crazy as you can see. Uh, this is basically just the light and nothing else. I mean, this is an image that I really liked as it is. So I decided to not do much about it. Let's jump to this guy right here. And I bet it's pretty much the same, yeah. So battery right here. And then I went down a little bit with the shadows. And then I brought up the highlights just a tad because it was a little bit too dark. So increased the contrast very nicely. And yep, before and after. So these two clips are right here, which I love them. Now the commercial is gonna go pretty fast right now. So let's just gonna jump uh, and see what else did I do here. Same, crush the shadows just a little bit and uh, increase the highlight. So just a little bit of contrast. I wanted this image to be blue because that's, that's a nice contrast between this guy and this. This is another one of those images that I really, really like. We have the dad helping the kids putting the swimming suit on. And I love how the sun is basically coming down from these clouds right here and hitting his body and the, that hurts just in terms of like smoothness. Look at that, like how the, the meads and the, the eyelids roll off, it's just beautiful. Uh, and we still have information on the watch, which is in complete shade at this point. Keep in mind the sun is setting right here, so this is a very high contrast scene. This is basically our flat image, 400 ISO for pretty much everything, so very low noise. Here's the battery, and of course here's that correction that brings down the shadows and the meads. 
and it pushed the eyelids to the warm side of the spectrum and uh, I think it's just beautiful. And uh, if I come here and I just bring this up, I mean, we're talking about, it's pretty insane. The, the amount of information that this camera retains are, are just, this is nuts, guys. Like, look even the, the details inside the swimming suit. You, you can see everything. And then, okay, now we jump to the raw footage from Red. So this guy right here, uh, I'm gonna give you guys the specs. 5120 by 2700. It's a 5K Red raw file and it's playing back like butter. So these clips here are all red. Check it out. So red codec, no problem in a 6K timeline. Here, pretty much same thing. I apply the buttery natural Rec 709 for red cameras this time. Let's see our raw settings. We're at um, 640 ISO. Lock 3G10, IPP2, which is the profile that I prefer from red. This is the actual uh, flat. So once we apply the battery, this is the result on the red. And this is after we drop the shadows, the mids, and the highlights. Again, do I care about seeing his beard? Absolutely not. This I like a lot, the silhouette kind of shot and the, and the water. So this is what I was looking for. Plenty of information right here, but once we drop it, it really becomes something else, in my opinion. Like, look how beautiful this frame is. So one, two, and three. Again, silhouette look. That and the kid enjoying themselves in the water with the surf. Pretty spectacular. And by the way, no fan kicked in into the computer. And battery is still at 90%. Unbelievable, really. This one, that's what I was referring before. Because it was the sun kind of hitting the lens, the shadow was super lifted. And this is at ISO 400 with six stop ND from the Ursa, the internal. But look, look the scope. This image is super bright. So what I did, I just dropped down the shadows, the mids, a little bit of the highlights. I pushed the gain, the highlights on a warmer a little bit. And uh, that worked out pretty good. But yeah, it's pretty pretty insane difference from the raw and the final clip. And here there's another watch shot. So before, after, before, after. I just like the image as it is. And you know, we received a lot of comments from people for this particular video. Everybody was super pumped and excited about the, the grading, how we shot it. And of course I sent it to, you know, DP friends and colors, everybody loved it. So uh, I just wanted to show you guys that you don't have to do complicated stuff to achieve something good looking. This is another clip of uh, him and his son right here. Let's just play it back. I mean, this is a black swimming suit and I'm shooting in a super high contrast dynamic range scene and still is not clipping anything in the shadows, like zero if you check the scope. And then you can go from something like this to something like this, which is incredible in my opinion. Uh, this is another one. It's probably one of my favorite frame as well. Uh, let's see before. And after the adjustment we dealt a lot, see, it goes a little bit warmer and I drop some shadows. Again, plenty of information everywhere so you don't have to be worried about them. And in this case, even if I drop the shadow, you still have details like right here. You can see the logo of the swimming suit, so that's great. Uh, we get some nice flare. They're nothing like an amorphic flare on this cook. They didn't flare at all, but they have a really interesting Baca and 3D pop effect, which I think they're, it's really, really, really good. The other cool thing is that we're jumping from B-Raw to Red Raw like this, and it, it's just playback amazingly. Okay, these are other more red clips. Again, flat image before and after, two no structure, nothing crazy. This is another one at sunrise, so we went back to 4,000. With that nice sky, blue sky in the back. Even here, man, the, the 3D pop that there is like from the subjects to the background is nuts. This is another clip at sunrise. This camera suffers sometimes from noise, but check this out. This image is so clean. I'm sure if we go to 2000, it's gonna be noisy, but not that much. This is 2000 and so there's some noise right here. But I mean, considering it's an Ursa, usually they suffer from noise. This is pretty damn clean to me. If we go 800, still clean. If you can drop it to 400, I think it's even better in terms of noise. It's, the image is super clean. Let's play these old beauties back. Even here, like, look at that. I can see his eyes and everything. Do I care to see this? No, I don't know. Here we're entering more into a cinematography debate more than color grading, but 
Are you liking this image better just because you have more information in the shadows? Or you're liking this better? Because I like this much better. But maybe it's just me, who knows? Okay, this is one of my favorite close-up shot of him, just because the Baca here is like complete nuts, complete cook style. Look at this. I look into the viewfinder and I'm like, that's exactly what I want in color. I don't want anything else. This image looks fantastic already, so let's just keep keep it like that. Buttery Natural Rx709, and let's drop some shadows and push the warmer tones. There you go. b Gen 5, buttery and some adjustments. Love this. And I don't know if you guys can see the sharpness right here on his, on his eyes. That's incredible. And another thing I want to show you guys, look at this side right here where the ear is. I mean, this to my eye was kind of pitch black, but the camera can still see it. Like, yeah, you wanted more information in the shadows? Here you go. You can see everything you want. It's like insane. All right, let's move on. We're going towards the end. This is another one of my favorite shots. Again, I want you guys to check out the sharpness on his right eye. Unbelievable, even that Baca with the rocks and the ocean in the background. And we push a little bit on the warm side, which I think it helped a lot. And we drop the shadows and the meats a little. Even without any adjustment, it just looks fantastic. But So let's keep playing this back. This is pretty much the same. Again, this was pretty flat. Here I had to drop the shadows quite a bit in order to make it a little bit more interesting. So that's the final one. It goes down quite a lot. This is another of those shots where I can actually show you the, the insane amount of information you guys have with this camera. Now, check this out. Now here we are pushing it. And what does that mean? It means that there is some noise. Not even the sun is clipping in, the, in this scene. It, it's ridiculous. So here I really shot it underexposed because of course it was a little bit under in terms of shadows here. So there is some noise, which I think is, is pretty normal. But at the end of the day, once you apply the light, that noise just goes away. So this is actually what I was seeing in the viewfinder. Of course, I shot this thinking about the silhouette look. This is what I was going for. A little bit more adjustment. I just drop it, the mids, because that beautiful orange sky comes up only if you drop the mids. If you don't, it remains kind of yellowish, but once you drop it, it looks gorgeous. This is another beautiful close-up shot of the watch. Again, super tricky scenario because we have the sun in the back. This is a flat image. Here we have the battery. And here we adjust some contrast. I don't know if it's just me, but that noise doesn't really bother me too much when he's like this. I mean, this looks more like texture to me. It's not that horrible noise that we were seeing with, you know, you know the 5D Mark II on that, this cam camera, but I think it works just fine. These are all Sansa shot. This one too, check this out. Now, do I care to see his hair? No, of course not. What I care here is to see him passing the watch. And you can clearly tell that's a watch. And then we move on to the close-up right here. Beautiful, incredible. Uh, we're still on the tuna structure, of course. And then we jump on this one. Again, another very difficult situation for any camera, pretty much. Watching this footage now that uh, after, when we shot this in May, I'm like, this baby right here. And it brings me to the point again to say, this thing can shoot 12K at 75P, 8K 120P, 12K, 8K, 4K, no crop, $6,000. And I'm not gonna say anything anymore. So let's just jump to the conclusion right now. I know it was an extremely simple color grading tutorial, but this is what I do. And some people ask me and I just wanted to show you guys how it works. What do I think about this Mac? Look at this, just look at the scrolling and you know, we can watch this thing again on a 6K timeline. Just wanted to show you guys in playback. There's no smart render or anything. I didn't do any optimized media. These are just raw files. So what Apple did here, I think is something pretty incredible. One thing though that I would say, I did try to do some noise reduction and I'm gonna try right here with you guys before closing this uh, tutorial. So if we go here and we apply some noise reduction, what I'm gonna tell you is it won't play back. 
unless you are on a 1080 timeline. It's not even playing back. Let's try to drop it to 4K. I'm just going like Ultra HD <clears throat> just for the sake of the test. Okay, in 4K with LED noise on it, it plays back at about 11 frames per second. Once we drop the timeline to 1080, now you're safe and you can uh, play back your clip with a noise reduction on that I was never able to do before. So guys, at the end of the day, is it worth it? It really depends on your workflow, it depends what camera you're using, it depends on a lot of things. In my situation, being a Blackmagic Corsa 12K user, I'm also a Pocket 6K user, yes, it makes sense, because sometimes, even with the Pocket 6K with my previous computer, I was having a hard time playing back some B-roll files. I'm confident in this machine, it can work for potentially five or six years. The four terabyte one, which is another point that I wanted to touch. I wanted to get a, 500, a one terabyte one, and then Tyler uh, he told me about that he was getting the four terabyte. I was like, whoa, that's a lot of space. But then I realized that with this camera, when I'm on set, if I wanted to put a project on it and start editing right away, I can just drop the car on my MacBook and just edit on the go without having SSD plugged in and that kind of stuff. So, and I think those SSD are also very well priced. Another thing that I still didn't announce on the channel or I just posted on Instagram probably is that uh, we're moving back to Europe next year. So it's gonna be a pretty crazy time for us traveling all over. And I needed a machine that I can just rely on. The, the display is beautiful, there's plenty of brightness great battery life that I can do professional work anywhere in the world. And lastly, I think where technology is bringing us is, it's pretty crazy that you see me right now with this guy right here that, I mean, it's, it's big till a certain point. It's, it's, I don't think it's that big. I can fit this guy in the Pelican case with two VMAN batteries and a battery charger. I can throw a couple of Lycar lenses in my backpack and with this guy right here, and this guy right here, I can basically shoot a feature film on the go. Like, that's all I need. There's no more excuses, there's no more limits. It's the story that we need, because in terms of technology and, and cameras and, and post-production devices, I mean, when you stop and think about this camera and this computer, what they can do together, I think it's crazy. We live in a pretty crazy time. All right, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.